uh, there's a there's another uh, little phrase that um, uh, leaders are readers. Um, and I do think welcome to the laws of business podcast here. We will share the skills you need to make your business a success. Learn about goal setting, productivity, time management, marketing, and much more. Hear inspiring stories with today's best business leaders and join a hub of thousands of passionate entrepreneurs across the world. And now, here's your host, Jamil Jama. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Law of Business. I'm Jamil Jama, and I interview entrepreneurs that can help you to start and grow your business. And today, I'm going to be chatting with Mike Diamond, a business blogger and technology executive. And in this interview, we're going to be talking about business leadership, personal effectiveness, innovation, entrepreneurship, fintech and digital banking, and military lessons to apply to civilian leaders. Before we start this interview, I'll give you a brief bio of who Mike Diamond is and what he does. Mike shares stories and concepts that engage audiences while providing actionable wisdom to apply to their lives. He shares leadership and personal effectiveness insights that come from his past as a military intelligence officer in the United, in the United States Army Reserve Desert Storm veteran, as well as a career leading teams for high growth tech companies. I love tech, by the way. He currently is an executive, he currently is an executive for the company that invented the ability for bank customers to deposit a check using their mobile phone. In addition to his blog, he's a frequent speaker at fintech innovation conferences and business schools. It's a real, re it's really awesome to welcome Mike Diamond. Everybody, help me to welcome Mike Diamond. Mike, how's it going? Uh, great, Jamil. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. First of all, Mike, I want to thank you so much for taking your time out to do this interview. I really appreciate this. Oh, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Fantastic, Mike. So, Mike. Um, uh, in this interview, we're going to be talking about um, leadership and mostly leadership uh, mm -hmm. because that's what you, you you help leaders to become leaders, right? Uh, I, do, I do my best and I, I'm, a, I'm a student uh, of it as, as much as anything. Yeah, but we're, we're all students. Everyone's, everyone's a student. Even um, this guy, um, Warren Buffett, he's a billionaire, <laughs> but he still sure. has mentors. He still has mentors and, and he's in his 80s now. And That's right. Has, yeah, he's actually. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a uh, an inspiration to all of us and how we want to be as we as we age. So we always, we all got we always need um, mentors, no matter how old we are or how much knowledge we have. There's always someone out there that knows more, right. even if they even if they're younger than you. That's right. That's right. And as a matter of fact, increasingly that that becomes true as you go through your career. Uh, it's important to uh, align yourself with people younger than you. When you're young, you want to align yourself with people who are older than you and more experienced. Uh, as as time goes on, it's good to align yourself with people who are younger and have uh, new perspectives, new skills. That's great. So, uh, uh, Mike, um, what lessons can today's leaders learn from someone like Gene Kranz in NASA? Sure, yeah. So just an intro to who Gene Kranz was, he was a flight director in, uh, for NASA uh, for many, many years. Uh, anybody who saw the movie um, Apollo 13 uh, remembers his character was played by an actor named Ed Harris. And Gene Kranz was famous for a, a crew cut, uh, a um, command of the flight center, and a, a vest that he, that he would uh, often be seen wearing. Um, and so uh, I've written about a, a couple things uh, about Gene Kranz. I guess one of them about the uh, the fictional Gene Kranz that we saw in the movie, and another one about the real Gene Kranz. And I think uh, two two quick things to to consider. Uh, if for anybody who saw the movie, remembers that there were a couple scenes where there were what appeared to be crises at the time during the the, the mission. And in one of the cases, the astronauts um, kind of go through a a medical mutiny, if you will, and they start ripping the, their biosensors off of, of them, off their flight suits, off of their bodies. And of course, the flight surgeon um, became upset about this and, and kind of raised the alarm bells with Gene Kranz. And, and he sort of smiled and waved it away. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We've got bigger things to worry about. Later in the movie, uh, they were quickly trying to put together a solution, and it was at life or death time. And um, the people uh, that were working on it said to him, we'll, we'll, 
uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, I forgot what the exact quote was, but something about, you know, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back with an estimate or something. And he got very angry. He even like hit something or kicked something. He said, I don't want an, I don't want an estimate. I want a plan. All right. And so the, the thing that was interesting about those two exchanges to me were knowing it's, it's, and I think actually a lot of things are analogous to being a parent. Um, you have to know and choose your battles and you have to figure out which battles are really important and which ones might seem important to people involved, but really aren't that big of a deal. You have to prioritize. You have to prioritize. Right. Yep. Yep. And one of the things that you see in all sorts of great leaders, uh, certainly military leaders, but civilian leaders, is knowing what to react to with all of your intensity and what doesn't require that. And most things don't require um, that sort of reaction. And, and just like a parent who yells all the time, uh, the children eventually tune them out. And the same thing is true in leadership. So that's one thing I think that was interesting about Gene Kranz from the movie. On the, uh, on the, in terms of the actual real Gene Kranz, uh, a few years after that uh, particular mission, there had been a, uh, a terrible accident in, in uh, one, of the, uh, one of the missions, and uh, 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 the astronauts in, involved all were killed in a fire on the launch pad. And, uh, that was in 2003, was isn't it? That was in 2003, I think. No. No, no, this was back in the, uh, like, 60s, 70s. Okay. Um, uh, this was quite a while ago, and uh, Gus Grissom was one of the astronauts who, who was who died in the fire. And it was really uh, a mess. It was, it was a mess in, in every respect. Uh, they had rushed the, the schedule. They had made a lot of mistakes. And um, so Kranz called uh, all the, the, the people in, in the flight control together. And he really read them the riot act and he read them, not them, the others, but the, all of them, including himself. And, and it became known as the Kranz dictum. Um, and if any of your uh, readers want to just search the Kranz dictum, as a matter of fact, I think my blog will come up at the top of the search results and you can read it. And they, but the point of it was there's no evasion of responsibility here. And, and he, he ordered them all to go back. Of course, this was a long, long time ago. So he wrote, told them to write this on their blackboards. Uh, but he said, go back to your office, write the words tough and competent. And that those are going to be the, uh, the words by which we're going to judge ourselves uh, going forward. And so uh, I thought that uh, there's a lot to learn there about when to take responsibility, when, when, when something an emergency, when is it not an emergency, and when something is indeed uh, when you do have bad results, uh, step up and take ownership. Mm. So leaders prioritize and they take responsibility mm. no matter what. Right. So right. Um, mm. uh, Mike, um, you mentioned movies. So are movies are a great way to learn lessons for leaders. What, what leadership movies right. do you recommend? Well, um, I, I, boy, I, it's a, that's a, a, a passion of mine. And I, I suppose, uh, after I'm done with this interview, I'll think about 20 great movies I should have mentioned. Um, I did a post a while ago on uh, uh, there was and it sounds kind of odd because it's an animated movie, but there's the uh, it's the movie Bugs Life. I don't know if you remember seeing it. Um, yeah, I think I did. I think I did. And it, yeah, well, it sounds it sounds odd because it's but but there was a famous movie in the uh, I want to say in the 1950s Japan called The Seven Samurai, um, and that's a common leadership movie, The Seven Samurai. And really, in a lot of ways, Bugs Life is a animated uh, version, except with bugs and, and everything. And you, it's like one of these movies that you see a lot where it's it's animated. It's about bugs. You think it's for kids. It's it's not just for kids. Believe me, there's some really valuable leadership insights there. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the main bug, the, the main ant is uh, a character named Flick and all the ants are marching along and they encounter, if you imagine how ants move along in a line, they encounter uh, yeah, ants, like a ants. leaf or something in their way. Yeah. yeah. And they say, you know, what should we do? How can we do? What do we do? And we can't go around. How do we get, get around this? And so he becomes a sort of a, a, a voice for uh, unconventional thinking in, in an ant world that is not known for unconventional thinking. So that's I think, a, that's I think ants idea. do that in real life. I think scientists discovered yeah. ants have communities. They have communities and they take care of each yep. other and they stick together. That's right. Uh -huh. So it's real. Uh -huh. it's, not, it's, not, it's not fictional. It's real. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
That's right. And of course, there's a there's a movie out right now, The Darkest Hour, right, about Winston Churchill. Uh, another example of uh, leadership in a time when, you know, people wanted to go a different direction. There was a strong uh, undercurrent of, you know, uh, appeasement and all the rest of it for, you know, really for understandable reasons. We look back now and we think, well, what what ended up happening in World War II had to happen. But but it wasn't like that at the time. At the time, you can see why there would have been a great push to just somehow make peace with the Germans and, and, and not go through the crucible of World War II. And so that's a bit, there's, there's, there are leadership stories abound in, in movies. Definitely. So, um, uh, Mike, can people find more, um, more, more, um, leadership movies on your, on your blog? Yeah, that's right. It's under my name, Michael Diamond. So it's just michaeldiamond.com. Fantastic. I'll leave a link in the, on the show notes. And uh, Mike, um, right. leaders, ma- leaders make leaders, not followers. Leaders create other leaders, not followers. Um, what are some of the leadership principles that, that have helped you lead global teams? Sure. Well, I think um, if uh, this, is, this would be a, 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 maybe a, an unfair question, but if somebody were to ask me what's the most important single word to describe leadership, the word that I would choose is clarity. Um, Good leaders are clear with the people that they're leading about what the objective is, why it's the objective. If you're clear about those things and, and rigorously and routinely clear about those things, a lot of other issues fall into place. And some of the, what happens in the business world today is there are so many competing priorities. There are so many conversations. Uh, there are there are like uh, new shiny objects for people to chase, uh, new challenges, and humans, all of us, just inherently forget what we're doing or why we're doing it. We we find ourselves all of a sudden in a funk or 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 just thrashing, which is kind of a term for expending a lot of energy but not making a lot of progress. And one of the ways to solve that is to be very clear. So what I generally believe is the first place to start in a leadership perspective is making sure everybody on the team understands, here's where we're going, here are the things that are most important to us, and here's why they're most important to us. And if you can just kind of keep focusing on that and weaving those into your communication, your management style, your objectives, your 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 internal meetings, all those sorts of things, then you, you're enabling the innate talents of the people in your team to take over uh, and to get you in the right direction. If uh, But in too many cases, uh, we're all scurrying in slightly different directions. People think that they're pulling in the same direction, but they really aren't. And so that's where clarity becomes so important. Have you have you read the book um, San Su? Or watch the video or the audio or listen. Or no, listen to the I'm audio. sorry that I haven't. Okay, no, I haven't. Have, you, have you heard of it all? Sansu. Uh, not at all. No. Sansu is a very popular, very popular book. Is it called Sansu, The Art of War? Oh, Sun Tzu. I'm yeah, sorry. Sun Tzu. Sorry. Yeah, the art of war. I wasn't, sure, I wasn't right. saying it right. Yeah. Was I wasn't saying. I wasn't no, clear. That's sorry. okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I, it's okay. I wasn't, um, I wasn't clear. I wasn't clear. Sorry. That's okay. As a matter of fact, I'll have a, I have a bonus uh, uh, book for you, um, which is so Sun Tzu wrote the Art of War. Uh, a gentleman named Steve Pressfield wrote an amazing book called The War of Art. Um, I, I you know you might want to put those in your show notes um, yeah. because uh, the War of Art is about it's really written for people who are writers you know if you think about authors and and bloggers and things of this nature but steve pressfield comes up with something that's universally true for all of us it's called the resistance he calls it quote unquote the resistance and he the resistance is the thing that causes us to be in a funk to not get our work done and so the war the the uh, the art of work by sun tzu has timeless uh, truths about about uh, leadership and conflict, and the War of Art has really great insights about self discipline and uh, motivation. Uh, and, and and so, Mike, uh, my next question for you is: um, You started a blog, and Sansu, it, it, the main that, that book is is mostly about leadership, and the mm-hmm. uh, the skills there can be used for business as well. Um, you started a blog about leadership and innovation and personal effectiveness five years ago. Right. Why did you mm-hmm. start that, and what have you learned? What have you learned in the process? Well, I think uh, the reason why I started it is because um, there's a 
there's a phrase that thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through lips and pencil tips. Uh, and basically what that means is you can, you can, you can kind of work out some of the things you're thinking through writing. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, to your listeners, I think a lot of us have heard this, this concept where if I ask your, uh, your listeners, uh, to learn something, maybe some topic they're unfamiliar with, uh, and I give them a, a, a written document to read and, and they, they'll read it and, and try and ingest the information. They'll, they'll learn it to a certain proficiency. If, however, I were to say, I'm, I'm going to give you the same document. Not only do I want you to learn it, but when you're done, I want you to give me, a, I want to give a, I want you to give a group of people a five minute class on the material. I want you to teach it to them. When you, when you say that to people, the, the, the natural human instinct is to, is to actually, and you, is to read a lot more closely and to learn a lot, uh, a, a lot better. And so therefore, uh, in terms of the writing I do, I sometimes am just thinking of things and working them out. Uh, I enjoy writing. Uh, and I enjoy reading and, uh, and I really enjoy the occasional, uh, the, the, occasion, the occasional reactions when somebody will reach out to me. And, and this is the thing when you're blogging, you don't know what really is happening out there in the world. You release these things, people read them, do, what do they do with it? You, you, in most cases, you'll never know, but every now and again, I'll hear from somebody and they'll say, like I did a, uh, a blog post some years ago on the importance of sitting down with sitting down and just dashing a note off to people who've been important to you and saying thank you. And you think about the times when we might have heard that from somebody else and what an amazing experience that was. And you think about how amazing it is to receive that and how little time we invest in that ourselves. So I, I wrote this little post and uh, about that. Uh, a few, well, maybe a month or two later, I happened to be at an industry event. And somebody at the event, uh, I, knew, I knew and he knew me and he's a, a subscriber to the blog, which, you know, I post about probably less than once a week. So you don't get a lot of emails, but, but he had gotten this and he, he was kind of running past me on his way to an elevator. He said, oh, he said that post was great. He said, I want you to know that as soon as I read that, I sat down and I wrote a letter to somebody who had, you know, done something really great for me many years ago. And that was the sort of thing, like, I wouldn't have known that if he hadn't just passed me at that moment, seen me and said that. And so uh, those are the, uh, to, the idea of being able to positively influence people through that is something that energizes me. Yes. And um, in the things are changing very fast these days, especially because of technology. Um, mm -hmm. What other traits you think will be, will be most important in the future economy? Well, uh, there's a there's another uh, little phrase that um, uh, leaders are readers, um, and I do think that uh, the process of learning. And I credit really anybody who's listening to this podcast is somebody who obviously is interested in advancing their skills. So you know, as the saying goes, I'm I'm preaching to the converted right now, um, but the uh, I think the uh, skill of reading. Uh, and that, that can be audio books, it can be um, blog posts, it can, it can be actual books, whatever it happens to be. But learning is, is a one thing. Uh, the other two traits that I think are really important, and they can be enhanced, is curiosity and optimism. Um, here, people think of those two as being innate traits. Uh, I'm inherently an optimist or I'm inherently a pessimist or that person's really curious and that person isn't. And certainly there's a degree of that that's, that's somewhat true, but those are skills that can be enhanced and they can be enhanced through practice. And so being optimistic and also being curious. So for instance, looking at something and saying, just taking a, just a moment and saying to yourself, ah, I wonder why that is, or I wonder what's going to happen as a result of that. Um, and becoming better at those are, are really uh, helpful as young people are, are establishing their, their, uh, their future. And, and then, then, then maybe the last thing I'll say is we were kind of talking about at the beginning is of finding people who have wisdom, have experience, and aligning yourselves with those people, not in an obsequious, you know, syncophatic way uh, and, and sucking up as people would have uh, would think of that term, but as a somebody who can learn from those people. And I, I, I was able to be exposed to really great leaders 
throughout both my brief military and my, my subsequent civilian career, my education, my youth, and, and learning from others is a, it's the, the cheapest form of education out there. Definitely, definitely agree. And Mike, I know we don't have much time left, so this is going to be my sure. final mm-hmm. question for you. I wish, we could, I wish we could talk longer, but we don't have much time left. Um, so my final question for you, Mike, is um, you were in military intelligence in the Army during Desert Storm. What mm-hmm. were some lessons you learned during your military service that you've applied to your career? Um, I think, uh, uh, I think again, uh, from a military perspective, um, coming back to the importance of clarity. Uh, the other thing is uh, I wrote a post a while ago about uh, a, a guy who had just joined. Uh, he had just been commissioned, so he was an officer. He was an engineer, and uh, he had a responsibility for leading his platoon to build a bridge across a, you know, a river somewhere. And he wanted to, and this, there's, there's a reason I'm bringing this up. He wanted to demonstrate to his people that he was not afraid to get, you know, his hands dirty and help them build. He didn't want to appear to be an elitist officer. Um, and so he got in there with his troops and he was in the mud and he was helping them build this bridge. And a, a more senior officer came by at one point in time. And he said, Lieutenant, come here. And he pulled the guy out and he had him come up to a hill and sit under a tree, which immediately made him feel self-conscious because he was, uh, wasn't was down there working with his men. He was starting to become the elitist he was worried about. And, and of course, he was an engineer and had been schooled and trained to be an engineer. And the senior officer said, take a look at that bridge you guys are building right now. Tell me, tell me what you see in terms of where it is and so forth. And he, for the first time, he kind of stopped and he looked at it for a while. And, and his engineer training kicked in and he said, well... Uh, actually, that bridge is probably in the wrong spot. It shouldn't be here. It should be over there. And those supports aren't quite right. They should be, if we're setting them up, you know, too close to here. They should be over there and so forth. And, and the, and the senior officer didn't need to say much else. He said, okay, go, go do that. Right. And so what did he learn there? He learned that, he learned that he's being, he's expected to lead and leadership sometimes requires that you take a step back and look at the whole thing. Um, and I, I found that to be a really uh, insightful story. And it's we get wrapped up. You know, instead of thinking about a, an engineer building a bridge, think about how much time you spend in your inbox, your, your email inbox. Um, how much time do you get focused on things that are right in front of your nose and taking instead of taking like, you know, 10 big steps backwards, you know, quiet your breathing and looking at what's really going on. Uh, I think those are the sorts of things that you start to you learn in the military and can be applied into the uh, civilian world as well. So, yeah, bird, uh, bird's eye view, not a bird's eye view, but as you said, just step back mm-hmm. and look yeah. and look at things and basically take, take, a, take a break and, and, look, and look at things, basically. That's right. Awesome. So, so Mike, um, if anybody yeah. wanted to contact you or read your blog, um, yeah. where can they uh, find you, please? Yeah, happy to have readers come. Uh, if you go to my blog and on my About Me page, there's a contact link. You can just click it there um, and uh, and send me a note. Happy to uh, to get connected with people. Uh, the blog again is michaeldiamond.com. Uh, I post, like I said, I like. I wish I post once every week. I don't really do that. I probably post three times a month. So if you subscribe, um, you get to an email every now and again. And hopefully the email makes you a little smarter and the posts are not super long uh, and uh, generally focused on, like you said, leadership, effectiveness and uh, innovation and uh, tend to, to and entrepreneurship, to be, entrepreneurship, right? Entrepreneurship. Yeah, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Absolutely. There's some good stuff on startups in there that you can search on and, and generally focus on encouraging people somewhere along the line. I started ending my post with the phrase good luck and and somewhere along the line I just kept doing that and so uh, I, I hopefully they're they're helpful for people and I, I do it just it's a it's a passion project and that's all that's involved and luck comes from pre- uh, luck comes from preparation right yeah it is uh, when uh, preparation and opportunity meet yeah, definitely definitely so Mike Dimon, I want to thank you so much again for doing, doing this interview if any of you um, know anybody that this interview would benefit, please share it with them. Please also let me know what you think in the comment section and subscribe. And I'm Jamil Jama. This is the Law of Business and that was Mike Diamond, Michael Diamond. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for listening to the Laws of Business podcast. Find out more about us on thelawsofbusiness.com. 
Thank you for being a part of our journey.